One of the things we intentionally wanted to do when we started out with this program was show how airborne science can look at the Earth as a system. There are a lot of issues with the planetary environment that need addressing. All the elements are coming together to say now's the time we're going to tackle these problems. It's becoming ever more important that we train a new generation of Earth scientists to, to look at the Earth and the kinds of changes that are happening. And that's exactly what we're doing with the Student Airborne Research Program. The hope is that they'll bring with them some new ways to study the Earth and that'll help us be better stewards of the Earth. Uh, it's a program with 29 students with a variety of backgrounds from biology, geology, engineering. One of the nice parts of the program is we're able to divide into three different teams. One sampled the air, one studied the ground process, and another one went over the ocean. So we've covered sort of three different uh, ecosystems. For the actual scientific data gathering, the primary thrust was to use NASA's DC-8. It's a very large aircraft uh, devoted to research. In this case, we concentrated on California. So I helped out with the WAS group, which is a whole air sampler. Um, we basically collect air samples throughout the Central Valley using two liter evacuated canisters. I just thought it seemed really interesting. I had never heard of taking science data on planes before, and then I was reading the descriptions of the various projects, and I thought the gas emissions group in particular was incredibly interesting, and especially with it, how it relates to climate change. The last five years I've studied dairy farm emissions. This is very important, especially in the San Joaquin Valley, only because they have a huge problem with ground level ozone. On the first science flight, we were in charge of the whole air sampler, and what we did was at below certain altitudes, roughly under 1,500 feet generally, we were taking samples very, very frequently, around once a minute, once every two minutes. And during the second flight, we were down on the ground, taking um, samples, ground samples, like concurrently, to try and match up, see what we were seeing on the ground with what we're seeing in the air. Uh, MASTER, which we used on this program, is actually the MODIS and ASTER airborne simulator. So this is, uh, in fact, a very unique instrument in that you have a, a wide spectral range over which you're collecting data. As far as I know, there's no other sensor in the world that can do that. So the students had access to a really unique data set. I took the students for two days out to some almond orchards near uh, Los Angeles, California, and my job was to take them out into the field and lead them through an entire mini project looking at evapotranspiration of agricultural lands um, using remote sensing. Right now I'm using the master. My project mostly uses the thermal data. And there you can look at canopy temperatures, and canopy temperatures are a good indicator of crop stress, water stress. So I'm in the Monterey Bay, which is the water section of the SART mission. John Ryan of uh, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute uh, was the lead for that uh, algal bloom ocean sampling group. And unfortunately, when we flew over, we weren't able to see algae blooms, but we were able to pick up many different features in the water. Um, and we were able to apply different atmosphere concepts and oceanic concepts. We are working with the ocean, but we were really able to you know, expand it to um, working with many different concepts within what we were seeing on the ocean. We had a huge array of interests in our group and, and levels of experience and expertise, and I think the projects reflected that. Everything from atmospheric correction of the master imagery, which to my knowledge has never been done at this level before, uh, so they were definitely breaking new ground in that respect. It's been a very rigorous schedule and in terms of it being a research program for students, I think it's just given them a great experience in what kinds of research airborne science does. One of the unique things about this program was that the students got to experience this kind of top to bottom data production flow. We are doing real research on maybe a smaller scale than what is usually done if you're there doing a three-year project, but it is real research with, you know, we're hoping to get real results. Um, I want to do environmental chemistry um, for grad school, and I, I know that after school I want to do something to improve the environment and the impact that humans have on it, and this is perfect for that. I think that it brought in my, my whole view on the sciences. And I think one of the things they've learned about remote sensing is that there's physics and chemistry and ecology and in botany and you know aerospace engineering all of these sorts of 
ideas come into play in remote sensing, and so it, it naturally fosters a multidisciplinary teamwork sort of environment. Everybody here is from a different background, from a different institution, but we all love science. We all love doing this. We're all nerds in our own way, and it's so great that we're all together and, and learning from each other and, and doing this together. That is one of my, another one of my favorite parts of the program is I'm talking with a geologist and another, you know, 10 seconds later I'm talking with someone who's doing oceanic sciences and um, you're able to really learn a lot about what's going on and, you know, use people's strengths in your research. I started, you know, as a first year graduate student and I got to fly and I was inspired and developed this huge passion for flying and the sciences. And I think some of these students have experienced that and have begun developing a passion for what I do and what many of us do here. And that's very inspirational because that makes me feel like I've shared my passion. You know, the main thing here is to get excited about airborne science and to be interested in that and to feel like this is something you might want to do in the future. I think the excitement in the students has been really great. You know, I think we should take some from the, the enthusiasm of the new generation coming in, and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll get us all going. I guess the real payoff will only be known in a few years when we see what happens to these students who have been part of this program. But I will say this, uh, it makes you optimistic about the future because for two reasons. They're really committed, um, and partly they're committed to learning about the Earth, but they're also committed to uh, let's arrest the things we're doing that are negatively influencing the Earth. Let's find solutions to these problems. And when I see the caliber of the student and their interests, it makes me optimistic that their generation is going to be able to do that.